and this was once the home of the Queen's grandfather, the Earl of Stroudmore. It's now a hotel. This is from top to bottom. And I'm gonna go inside and show you how beautiful it is inside. It, this, is, this is the whole hotel. So this was once all the home of the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II's grandfather. Okay, any questions or shall I continue? I'll take that as continuing. So here's the next slide. Okay, here's the entrance and I'm gonna go inside. Okay, once I went inside, I couldn't speak and I will let you know this was a bit naughty because nobody's allowed inside, but I didn't get past the entrance. At the end of the video, a lady said to me hello and then told me I had to leave, but you get to watch some anyway. Here we go. You know the queen, right? I hope you all know the queen. <laughs> I think that's the Queen Mother, the picture. And I, I didn't get much further, yes, because at that point, someone interrupted and said I had to leave. But there you have, you got the entrance of the place. Next video. So this is a Muse Street. I will, in the video, I, I speak further about the topic. Here's one of London's classic Muse, Muse Streets. And inside, we'll take a look at the Muse houses. Look at this car, very cute. So, a walk inside the muse. These were once where the wealthy people kept their horses before there were cars for transportation and the carriages. So they have now been converted into homes. One of these Here's a, here's a view of some, there's, here's a view of, and I'm just gonna go around so you can see. Here's, here's one, I'm trying to get you the full view. So these are what the Muse houses look like. One of these will definitely cost you at least two million dollars but this is, was once where they kept the horses. You can see on this one, they still have the doors that would have been stable doors, if you're able to see. Look how pretty it is though now. Now it's a home, once it housed horses. And if you can see all the Muse houses, Muse streets, sorry, have the cobbles. Can you see the cobblestones? I'll zoom in all of them, the original cobblestones. So we'll walk a little bit further down. And this is, this, there's a, well, there's a gentleman walking. Look how pretty this is at the end of the muse. So there are many, many of these muses and some of them are very beautiful. This is an average one, I would say. Hope you enjoyed looking at it. Okay. So if you don't like muses, you may not be interested, but I took, I think, another, further videos and pictures because I find them so cute. These are, they're, uh, in the, where I live, the uh, Royal, uh, Royal Borough of Kensington, Chelsea, there are many because it was uh, where the wealthy lived and they needed their horses and carriages. This is why there are many muse streets. I'll take, oh, sorry, this is, okay. This is another video. Here's another muse, and I had to film it because I love this archway <coughs> at the entrance. I don't know if you can see, I'm trying to zoom in the details, the columns. It's, I guess, new, sorry, it's one column is being renovated, it seems, but it's a neoclassical style. And inside, you'll find the same small houses and the cobbled streets I mentioned. Can you see the cobbles? There. 
There we go. And then the next one, sorry, I don't know why that keeps up. So this is just a picture of another Muse treat I walked past. Um, it's not so clear, but just you, just to have an idea. This house, I just thought it was so cute. Can you see, it's, it's one floor, this pink house, just one floor, but it's all, can you see how long it is? I just thought it looked so picturesque in one of the muses I passed by. Here's the other angle, the same house. Um, this is another muse with a, this column entrance that I passed by. These are, by the way, just to let you know, so these are all in either South Kensington or Knightsbridge. Uh, this is just a pretty, another home in the muse. I just thought it was pretty. I took a picture of it. Okay, so this is the video. This is Prince Concert Road, just to let you know. So on this road, I filmed, uh, they'll, they won't be, they'll come along, but you'll see. There's, it'll start by the Royal College of Music. This is this video, um, and then, oh, this is just a picture, but after this, you'll see the video of the Royal College of Music. Uh, it was founded in 1891 during the Queen of Reign Victoria. After the Royal College of Music, you'll see the Royal Albert Hall. The back of, so the front entrance is not on the street, but the bank entrance is on the street. And um, there's also later on, uh, on the same street, Prince Concert Road, there's the Imperial College. I, I just filmed it briefly because it has a beautiful facade. I know for people, if you don't like architecture or history, this is going to be boring. But if you do, you'll enjoy it. Here goes. I love this classic London architecture. This sort of Victorian, I think it's Victorian. I just love it. So as you can see, I'm going around again and again. We're going to go take a look inside. This is the Royal, there we have it, the Royal College of Music. Uh, you know what, to make it fun, I'll, I will cross the road and come up close so you can see it. It's a bit of a, not a sunny day today. I'm not sure so how clear all the pictures are, but um, still, I think London is beautiful with or without sunshine. I love the city. And here we go into the Royal College of Music. Beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't think I can go into the park with the instruments due to COVID. Here's a statue. I will check. I think that might be Prince, one of the Prince George's. Oh, there's a plaque, so I can, we can read the plaque. Here, here's the founding patrons. There you have it. Let's zoom out. Take a step over here to read who's on the plaque. And this is a step, oh, it's the Prince of Wales. So that would have been, it's, I'll read it and let you know later. Here we go, the Prince of Wales. I think that's Queen Victoria's son. Oh, I don't know if I see, look at this, look at the architecture, it's so beautiful. This is the ceiling. Well, forgive me for my cameramanship. I'm neither a cameraman nor photographer. And here is, this is Princess Alexandra. So here she is. Statue for Princess Alexandra. And really beautiful. Here's a door. Here's another door. There's a picture of the, of course, the late Queen Mother, Queen Mary. And here's another painting. And on the other side, another painting. Sorry for the bad camera issue. And there's a figure wearing a traditional costume. 
Okay, this is the entrance. I'm not sure if I can go past this point. I will inquire. So just to let you know, I did inquire and they told me I couldn't go past. But if you ever visit London and you go to the Royal College of Music, they have inside a, a, muse, uh, a museum of instruments, you could say. And I know they have, I'm not sure it's absolutely the oldest piano in the world, but one of the oldest pianos in the world and a, and a collection of other unusual instruments. Unfortunately, it's closed at the moment. But um, yes, if you have an interest in music, it's definitely worth a visit. Okay, so the next video, this is outside the Royal Albert Hall. The Royal College of Music, well, the statues were dated, if you noticed, 1889, which would have been during the end of the reign of Queen Victoria. I think she died in 1900, 1901. Forgive me if I'm one year out. Uh, the, um, as for the Prince Albert Hall, it's celebrating 150 years because it was opened by Queen Victoria in 1871. Um, you can watch the video and find out. So, the Royal Albert Hall is celebrating 150 years since Queen Victoria opened it. Here it says, 1871, Queen Victoria opened the Albert Hall named in honor of her beloved husband. Again, this is 8, 1908, the suffragettes hold their first 20 women's meeting. Then we have here, 1933, Albert Einstein presents his final speech given in Europe at the Hall. I guess that's the Europe Royal Albert Hall. And this is... Uh, here we have 1941. The BBC proms move to the hall after the Queen's Hall is destroyed in the Blitz. The Blitz, so there you have it. And here are other musicians who have performed here. This is 1973. Welsh superstar Dame Shirley Bassey takes to the stage. There you have it. A lot of history here. Okay. Um, so we'll continue. Of course, many, many famous people have performed in the Royal Albert Hall. Not just these, but this was, these were plaques outside, obviously. Here is the Royal Albert Hall. Sorry for my poor filming skills, but uh, I think you can see what it looks like. Really beautiful. Look at this arch on the side. Okay, I'll zoom in. I'll come closer so you can see more. And at the top, uh, I don't know if you can make it out, but I can see it says, let me zoom in more. Oh yes, I can zoom in more. So there, let me do the arch again. Oh, a London red bus is passing by, sorry. So there's that arch on the side. And then at the top, I can read the inscription which says, erected for the advancement of the arts and science and works of industry of, okay, unable to read the rest now. There you have it. Look at this, just how beautiful. Look at the windows. I'll get, look at the, the work on the windows, how beautiful. Look at it. I'll get closer so you can get to have a better look. Okay. Um, well, obviously, actually, I may perhaps I should have said this earlier, but this area where we it's Kensington, uh, mostly in Kensington and some in Knightsbridge is filmed, uh, was uh, at its, you know, this was at its, this was all uh, built somewhere between 1830, not just the Royal Albert Hall, but the whole area was developed somewhere between 1830 to 1870, 1880. And this was the peak of the British Empire, you know. So, so this is why it's so, uh, you know, it was it was very well planned, and this is where the wealthy and the royals lived. And uh, I guess that's evident. We'll continue now. Here is, is I'm not sure how clear it is for you, but it says the date is 1871. 
and then it says on the top, Albert. This is to the one side, this is on one side of the main entrance. And the other one has the same date, 1871, and it's the top, it says Victoria. I'm not sure if you can make it out. Okay, sorry, I don't know why the video's paused. Was that the end of it? Maybe so that was the end, sorry. Victoria, I'm not oh. sure if you make it out. Oh, okay, no, didn't pause. That was the end of it. Um, before I continue, does anyone want to ask any questions? Okay, I'll take that as a no. We can continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have questions. Oh, yes, what is the question? Is there, like, uh, those uh, which are show as, like, uh, Albert and Victoria, is there some sculptures are missing inside because it looks like should be yeah, some sculptures I, I don't think so but you will see at the back a back which i filmed the back there's a statue of uh, prince albert and, mm -hmm. and 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 facing it in the front there's the albert memorial is also a statue there are many statues around it but i know what you mean it looks like that alcove how how's the statue but i don't think so because mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been removed i just made I, I don't see why would they would have removed it. So I, I, I'm just assuming, no, there's no statue there, but there are statues around. You'll see them later on. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, I've come right up to the building and I'm gonna walk right up to show you the details of this, how beautiful this is. Let me show you how close I am. There's my hand. I'm touching it i'm not sure we should be allowed to touch such a you know building that's 150 years old all the detail is so beautiful obviously the british are very good at constantly renovating and maintaining these beautiful buildings here's a coat of arms on it with the lion and here another decoration on the side. I'm so close. I'll step back so you can see what I'm looking at. The coat of arms and the decoration. And here's another coat of arms. So the whole building has so many decorations on it. I really wouldn't, it would take me a day to film them all, but there you got a close look at, look at some of it. Okay. Okay. So this is the back of the building. Um, I'll just let you know, so those stairs, um, so there was a plaque I read, so not that I'm so brilliant and I knew this, but these stairs were uh, constructed in 2012 to celebrate Queen Elizabeth II, uh, I'm not sure what it was, Silver Jubilee or, well, anyway, she was queen for 60 years in 2012. And in celebration, they did these stairs and she came here. She was physically walked up the stairs and there's a plaque to commemorate this. So there you have it. And uh, by the way, actually, I didn't mention in the video, but where I'm standing now is just outside the Royal College of Music. So these two buildings are opposite each other. Here you can see the video now. This is the back of the Royal Albert Hall. I love the stairs. I'm gonna zoom in. Here are the stairs, you can see, and look, look how beautiful it is around with the greenery on the side. And I'll zoom in. And this is the building from the back. I'm gonna go up close, give you a better look. So I hope it feels like you've been walking around by right now. Here's, here's the closer one. So I've come closer to the statue at the back, which is a statue of uh, Prince Albert. Let me see, um, I'm gonna zoom in. There's an inscription in Latin, which I looked at. It, it says, I'm assuming it says, this is a, to commemorate Prince Albert and there he is standing at the top. Sorry, the picture isn't so clear, but there you have it. I'm zooming in. Okay. So we'll zoom out. And there's the statue behind Prince Albert. So 
Okay, so just a little bit, this chimney, I think, it is connected to the Royal Albert Hall. Actually, I'm not sure, but I just thought this chimney was amazing. It's still working and smoke comes out of it. You can watch the video. Uh, it's right next to the Albert Hall. You'll see it there. Here's what looks to me like a chimney. And I'm gonna, this is right by the Royal Albert Hall. And I'm trying to zoom in. I don't know if you can see the smoke coming out. So this chimney must be still in use. I hope you can see this book. I'll zoom out again and just let you see this is just by the Royal Albert Hall. Okay. Okay. So the next the next video, this is uh, uh, Royal College of Organists, people who play the organ. Here we go. So many beautiful buildings, but another one I just had to take a short video. This is, I'm trying to zoom in, it is the Royal College of Organists. We'll zoom out a bit now and just look at all the detail in these buildings. Look at, look at this, look at, you can see the musicians in a parade and it's just really, look at all the detail, look at the windows. It's just really very, Beautiful. So, the Royal College of Organists. Okay. Okay, so next, uh, this is, we're back at the front. We went all around the Royal Albert Hall. And now we're going to, this is just to show you that how close it is to the Albert Memorial. You'll, you'll, you'll watch. We've looked at the Albert Hall. And sitting famous, facing the Albert Hall is the Prince Albert Memorial. I'm gonna w walk in the gate and get closer to the memorial. Okay, so the next will be a close up of the memorial. And I may say this, but while I have your attention, I'll repeat it again. The symbolism is amazing. You know, she, uh, uh, Queen Victoria constructed this after he died in his memory. And I guess she must have loved him very much. And this amazing symbolism, Golden Prince Albert sits and looks out on his Royal Albert Hall, you know, and it's just, I think it's amazing. And a testament of a great love. Here we go. We've oh, looked at the oh, Albert. Sorry, the next We've video. looked at the Albert. Here I am closer and again, you can see the golden Albert, there he is, I've zoomed in, sitting on his memorial, there's some of the detail. It says, oh, it's in Latin, I'm not sure what it says exactly, but I, I read people, oh yes, Queen Victoria and her people, it's English, sorry. And there you have, and at the top, at the very, very top, there's the cross. So what I was going to say, interestingly, the cross, a symbol, crucifixion that happened miles and miles away. Anyway, uh, back to what I was going to say. This is an amazing tribute by Victoria to her beloved Albert, a golden statue of him. If you turn around and you, it looks facing the Royal Albert Hall, an, another amazing monument to him, timeless. Golden Albert sits, the statue of the Golden Albert commemorating him sits and looks at the Royal Albert Hall also com commemorating him. It's very powerful. I've always found it very powerful. Amazing tribute to her, Victoria to her beloved Albert. And there you have the statues. This is supposed to be in the days when um, Great Britain ruled half the globe. This one, I believe is, uh, I'll get closer. I can't remember if it's Asia or Africa. Let's get closer. It was Asia. In case you're worried, it was Asia. <laughs> Uh, so I'll continue. I have some footage I cut out, but if we have time, I'll include it. I'm oh, sorry. This is, okay, so this is 
So this is also on Prince Concert Road. If you remember the sign before we looked at the Royal College of Music, this is uh, the facade of Imperial College. Uh, again, you know, all of this, uh, like I said, was built around, let's say 1870-ish, 1870, 1880, just a beautiful building. So I took a- This is one of the buildings that is now Imperial College. I love the detail. I'm going to zoom in on the statues. I don't know if you can see the statue, how well you can see it. And there's this, look at the detail, the statues and the doorway. Such a grand place. And there you have it at the top. It says Imperial College of Science and Technology. And up above, it says Royal School of Mines uh, Department of Geology, Royal College of Science. And there you have more of the, of the statues. Okay. This. So this is. Um, it's funny enough, this should be after, but that's okay. This is uh, Queen's Gate. This is one of the entrance to the parks. And you can see the sign, it says Queen's Gate. So this, at, by Queen, when you enter, it will be, if you're entering the park, it will be on your left-hand side. This is Queen's Gate Lodge. This is the caretaker where he lives. So I just thought it was cute, so I included it. Oh, this is really bad, a video is, well, Okay, well, at the end, there's one video, it seems I forgot to upload it. Well, we, can, we can watch it at the end if you still have time. Uh, this is uh, Kensington Palace in the distance. It's inside the park. Uh, here we go. So this is Kensington Palace from a distance. I'll get closer. By the side, this is a statue of Queen Victoria. I'll also get closer to that one. And again, the symbolism, she looks, she sits and looks on out to the park where there's a lake. Uh, it's called the Round Lake. Okay, I made a mistake in the video. I don't know why I said Round Lake. I know very well it's called the Round Pond. The Round Pond. I made, I don't know why I made a mistake. Just so you know, everyone in, in the area knows the park and the Round Pond. Here we go. I'm not sure if you can, yeah, this is the lake. You can see ducks around the lake all full of symbolism. So I'm going to go up close to the palace and so you can have a better look. So here I am by the statue of Queen Victoria. Here's the plaque. Not sure if you can read it. It says Victoria on it. And there she is sitting on her throne. And behind her is Kensington Palace, where she was born. Currently, William and Kate live here. It was also the home of Diana at one point, Princess Diana, and many other kings and queens. And as I said, she looks onto the lake, there you have the lake. So, there you have it. Oh, behind her is the sunken garden, a beautiful garden, but currently being renovated. So, that's it. Here I am outside the main gate entrance of Kensington Palace. And I'm gonna walk up right up so you get a good look better look at some of it this is only part of the palace you're not seeing all of the palace at the moment and is usually it's open to visitors unfortunately due to covid uh, no one is allowed in and i will zoom in this is a statue of william the third who once lived here in this very palace so there you have it, Kensington Palace. Oh, over a hundred years ago, the, all the lands of uh, Hyde Park 
were the hunting grounds of the palace. There used to be deer, but the kings and perhaps queens hunted the deer to extin extinction. And quite peacefully, over a hundred years ago, the royalty in England, in the United Kingdom, I should say, peacefully relinquished uh, the, the park to the public or the grounds of the palace, whichever you want to call it. And here we are. Okay, um, after this, we move on. This is the last video about the palace. Does anyone have any questions regarding Kensington Palace? I have one question. Can we, can we enter to Kensington Palace when we are there? Yeah, usually now due to COVID, there's a tour. I've taken the tour. There's a tour of the palace. Um, obviously, because William and Kate actually live there, I'm sure you're not led into their living quarters, but it's so big that there is a big section where you, you I've, I've taken the tour. But at the moment, due to COVID, you can't go in. There's also, you can go... I, I the time cost 18 pounds. I'm not sure how much it costs now, but what I was gonna say for free, if you don't wanna spend money, part of the uh, palace has been converted into, the caf into a cafe. But again, due to lockdown, the pandemic, the cafe is currently closed and I could not enter it. But uh, in normal times, uh, you can walk into the cafe, they sell souvenirs, you can have a pe uh, coffee, a piece of cake, etc. Oh, perfect, okay. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we will wait that this COVID will be gone, you know. Okay, this thanks. is another hotel very close to my parents' home where I grew up, and it looks onto the palace. So there's the palace in the distance. I've always liked this hotel, this is why I decided to film it. And even on my way to school, oh, a bus is going by, even on my way to school. Uh, when I was in high school, I loved the details. I'm gonna stop and get closer so I can share with you a little bit of the details of the building. So basically, this if you can see, there's a British flag in this Frederick building. It's, it's a boutique five-star hotel. Unfortunately, I never stayed in it, but I would like to. It just looks so beautiful. I'll get closer. Here I am now in Kensington Court. And this is the, a step back. Okay. And this is the side of the Gucci Hotel I told you looks on to, uh, looks on to the Kensington Palace. I always loved this detail as a child. I'm going to try the serpents above this window. You can see the window. These serpents coming down, look at their tails. Just found it so detailed and right by the side of the hotel this is Kensington Court um, Kensington Court there's a lot of uh, embassies if you can see the flags I'm gonna zoom in a little bit I love the details of these homes how detailed they are um, most of this area as I probably would have said was built in around circa 1850 18 30 in the reign of Queen Victoria. So there you have it. I will go a little bit closer if you want to see the homes in a little bit more detail. Again, apologies about the terrible cameramanship or camera womanship. So here we go. I'll get right opposite one of whoops, somebody walking by, one of the homes and look at, at this building i don't know if you can see the details on the window oh. details on the window the ironwork of the balcony look at that and there's the very 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 top of the chimney so I'll zoom out That's bad cameramanship and rain, all getting in the way of taking a great video. So this is what they look like.
played just in case you didn't watch it. This is the front. It's called the Milestone Hotel. I just think the facade is so beautiful. And this is why I'm taking this video. This is the entrance. And the details are beautiful. If you look in the window, you can even see the lamps and the chandelier. But unfortunately, again, I can't go in due to double. But just the facade gives you an idea of how beautiful it must be inside. Okay, so by the way, just obviously, just so you know, I, I've filmed a few hotels, you know, this hotel, another hotel, but there are so many hotels in London and so many of them are beautiful. But these were just ones that I picked that I like. So please don't think that these are the only hotels in London. And secondly, I was going to say, I don't know if you caught this. So the milestone, I know, uh, does an afternoon tea that I've always wanted to do, but never got around to doing. I think it's about 60 pounds, which is $200 times 1.4, because I think currently it's 1.4, uh, the pound dollar exchange rate. Um, but yes, it's definitely, it's, it, what's nice about it, it's boutique. So it's not part of a chain. It's, it's, there's a clear between uh, in front of it. There's clear view of Kensington Palace. If you want to wake up and look at the palace, and uh, you know you can see it's a very beautiful building. And I don't know if you caught it before. I told you it was raining while I was doing all this. Anyway, I'll continue to the next one. Okay, so this this is the story. This is from where I live. How I like to walk to get to Harrods. Harrods is a department store, in case you haven't heard of it. Very, very luxurious, high end. You know, like, for example, they bring ridiculous things. Like once they had a pair of shoes that were a million pounds. I don't have a picture of the shoes. The reason that they were a million pounds is that they were diamond studded. But I'm just giving you the idea of things that you can see at Harrods. Anyway, I love this. I, I always felt it was like a secret doorway because by the way, unless you live in the area, nobody knows about this. And I read, so there's a plaque, although I've used it many times, I never read the plaque, but I read the plaque today. So I'll tell you the history behind it. This used to be a solid wall with no hole in it. And it was the boundary of the Let Rutland estate. The Rutland estate. Uh, then, you know, during the Second World War, there was the Blitz, that was Nazi bombing of London, very heavy bombing of London, and this boundary or wall was destroyed in the Blitz in 1940. It was rebuilt eight years later in 1948, but the res residents asked for continued access, so they left this doorway. Its official name is The Hole in the Wall. Very sophisticated name. <laughs> this wall with the little doorway, but its official name is the hole in the wall, is right in the heart of Knightsbridge. And this is the path I love to take to walk to Harrods. Uh, the history of it is that the wall was the boundary of the Rutland estate, and there was no hole in it. But in 1940, the boundary was destroyed in the Blitz. Eight years later, it was rebuilt, this wall, the boundary, but people asked to still have access. So this hole in the wall was made, and now you know. Well, you get to hear everything twice. It's like stereo. <laughs> anyway, so this is the... And this is Harrods. Uh, so... Uh, I, to be honest, I, I mean, now it's closed, but uh, I enjoy from time to time, even though it's too expensive for me, so I really can't shop there, but I enjoy going to have a look. Looking is for free after all. Here I am, right in front of Harrods. Undisputedly, the United Kingdom's most luxurious department store. Uh, at the moment, it's closed due to COVID, so we can't go inside, but I thought you'd have like to have a look in, at it outside. Here is the sign, Harrods, on the side, on the side of the building. And that's the coat of arms. And there you have it, Harrods. Here I am. 
Here we are up close. They have an ad for Mew Mew going on in a screen on the side. I'll zoom in a bit to the windows. Okay. Here we are. So this is just the main door. It's currently closed, as you can see, but just thought I'd give you a view of the main door. And this is a side street. I think I said everything in the video, but I'll hear the video so I don't have to say it again. If I missed out something, I'll tell you. Here I am at Hans Crescent by the side of Harrods. This is now pedestrian. Hans Crescent, when I was a teenager, used to have cars on it. Here's Harrods. There you have Harrods. And, and I'm going to take you closer to this cafe by the side of Harrods. I just love it. It's all pink. And here we go. Here we go. Then I realized it will take too long to walk there and continue filming. So I stopped and I did another video. Here we go. Here I am. Here I am by the sides of Harrods and this cafe that I love because it's simply, to me, it looks like a fairy tale. So here we go. I'm going to come up close. You can see they have a bicycle. This and is a beautiful the flower in the basket in front. The hotel on Queen's Gate. Uh, and uh, if bicycle. you're a fan of the Rolling Stones, and they I'm filmed take a inside, inside. the cafe of the Sultan. Unfortunately, due to COVID, and I can't go inside. They have these beautiful but, uh, unicorns and other After COVID, tale. you can visit and have the rock and roll floating around afternoon tea um, they do. If you in go downstairs, in honor of the Rolling Stones. Covered. And in this is Queensgate. It's a beautiful and street. And with that, and then my and tour of London. This end of it, I'm not sure if you can see. That's the gate. That reddish colored gate is the Queensgate. And so there you have it. I I missed that one video, but you know what? Um, I'll share it with you now. Uh, oh, any questions before I, I go on? This was supposed to be the end, but I, I skipped one video. I thought I'll add it now. But would anyone yes, like Raja, I have a question. <laughs> I think it. one of your events were, was there, right? Correct. Wow, you, you have a good eye, Lucia. Yes. <laughs> wow. That was, that was in summertime, so that was August. So, wow, a while back. But, yeah, you remember I don't know. I just like it. I think it looks cute. You know, whatever. Maybe some people will not like it in the audience. But again, this is tour, a tour by me, so I get to include everything I like, and I don't have to include anything I don't like. Um, yeah, any other questions? Okay, so one last video I, I skipped. Uh, just give me one moment. Um, here we go. Uh, uh, before I play, just, it's, so I don't know, anyone here a fan of the Rolling Stones? Who isn't? Okay, so they filmed one of their video songs at this hotel. It's called the Gore Hotel. It's on Queen's Gate. And here goes the video. This is the Gore Hotel, a boutique hotel on Queen's Gate. And uh, if you're a fan of the Rolling Stones, they filmed inside the cafe of the Sota. Unfortunately, due to COVID, I can't go inside. But uh, after COVID, you can visit and have the rock and roll afternoon tea they do in honor of the Rolling Stones. And this is Queensgate. It's a beautiful street in London. And at this end of it, I'm not sure if you can see, that's the gate, that reddish colored gate is the Queensgate entrance to the park. So there you have it. And that is the stop share. That's the last video that I'm sharing. Um, so actually it wasn't too bad. We're, we're actually now done. Um, of course, this is just a 
minute glimpse of London. There's so much more. Um, if you're wondering, London was founded by the Romans. Uh, it was founded in um, 40, okay, I might be one or two years off, but around 48 or 47 AD, 47 or 48 AD. Uh, they chose it because London was on a river. And the point they chose it is where the near river was narrow enough to build a bridge. Um, they also, uh, the Roman wall, they, they built a, you know, to, as, as a defense, as many, uh, you know, Roman cities and medieval cities, the Romans built a wall around London. The wall was uh, built uh, around circa second, uh, second century AD, but for, few, uh, for the future, going into the future, another 1,600 years, that wall was pretty much the boundaries of London. And then it was after that, that London expanded, obviously great, you know, to a great, very, it's way out of those boundaries, way, 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 way. But that's a little bit of the early history. Um, I mean, there's so much more, but uh, would anyone, is there anything that someone would like to discuss? Anyone would like to ask? I'm here to answer. So maybe people don't start, I'll start. <laughs> Nadia, uh, you take people to many restaurants, for example, in London. Uh, can you tell us uh, what your favorite restaurants are? Okay, uh, that's, a, you know what, that's a difficult one. I think, um, let me just say this. I think there's many, many, many wonderful restaurants and all budgets. And, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, I, I, I have a wonderful time even if I go to, let's just say, a middle budget or lower, I don't have a problem. Uh, very, you know, otherwise there's the, they're very high end restaurants that are, you know, very, very pricey. And the good thing, there's a range for everyone. So it depends on your budget. But I don't think, I don't think I'll name one restaurant. That's really difficult, but there's many, many, many nice restaurants. Um, different you can get every kind of cuisine uh you know ones which are very with very ornate uh decor indoors and outdoors uh really too big a question to answer but i hope i gave a gave somebody gave you a, a rough idea anybody else like to ask a question i just want to comment nadia sure uh I like those presentations when people are speaking from their vision, like people who are living in some place, let's say, like you are living here in Dublin. It's not like uh, so good that you see always oh, just by touristic side, you know, like people who are working uh, in tourism, you know. But uh, I like, you probably know already, I like when I see all, like, let's say, cities, Paris or London or Tokyo or I don't know, from vision from people who are living there, you know. And your neighborhood is perfect, you know, because you're living there and you, you showed us what you are seeing when you're walking there, what you are feeling there and so on, you know. I like this when somebody speaks uh, personally, let's say, you know. Not the, that you're selling us touristic uh, experience, you know. Like. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Christina. I have to say, look, I'm very lucky, but everything you saw in the video, I are, let's just say five to 10 minute walk from me. The furthest, the furthest was Harrods, which is about 15 minutes where I, from where I live. And uh, I, I'm super lucky because you know, there are different parts of London and everyone has a different experience, but I'm super lucky that these are part of the places I pass by and walk by every day. And the reason I included them, although I see them every day, uh, I never get bored. I still find them spectacular. That's all I was gonna say. Yeah, because I saw in uh, comments of people, a lot of people went in London, but they didn't see this part of London, which you showed us now. You know, like your personal vision, you know? This is a good experience, you know, and thank you for that. You know. I'm glad you enjoyed it. 